<laughs> we are feminine, we are sweet, but we do not let people take advantage of us. Hello! So it's actually the afternoon. <laughs> I'm still suffering from nausea, the quite literal version of morning sickness where it's in the morning. So I thought I would delay this vlog a little bit. These two day vlogs seem to be working a little better for me, um, but do not despair. Today's an exciting day. I'm gonna be bringing you guys along with me to our second appointment, checking up on the pregnancy. And I am obviously so excited. I love going to these appointments. I love learning as much as I can. I love tracking the pregnancy, seeing that everything is going along smoothly. I am actually at a higher risk of preeclampsia because I have an A and A, an anti-nuclear antibody in my blood. We got that tested actually a year ago for something unrelated. So going into this pregnancy, I knew that I would be higher risk. So these appointments mean a lot to me, checking my blood pressure um, and yeah, just taking it a lot easier. If you haven't read my blog post yet on the pregnancy, I do go into more detail about that. But 
just in general I am trying to take it slower so we're gonna be going for a two-day vlog again to give me some of that relaxation time to just take things slower um, and really try to be as healthy as I can by being as stress-free as possible so we are gonna go get some food going for me and my hubby and then we're gonna jet off to that appointment I'm very excited and then I'm gonna you know we're gonna do some stuff around the house so yes thank you for joining and I'm gonna to go eat because I'm very excited to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm pregnant and hungry. <laughs> great I always get a little bit nervous I have a lot of emotional energy pent up when I'm dealing with phone calls from the hospital or going to appointments just because I want good news I want the baby to be healthy and it went that way so it was a great appointment we got to hear the heartbeat she put this like thing on my stomach and we just heard the you know little pitter patter of his heartbeat and a bunch of kicks even though I'm not physically feeling any kicks just yet, um, he is clearly kicking. She confirmed that for us. So it was just really great. I love my doctor. She's fabulous. Got some blood work done. Um, and my blood pressure is still looking good, which is good. Um, when you are at risk for preeclampsia, so far things are going good. Continue to pray for me. I deeply appreciate it. Um, but I am also exhausted right now. I'm so ready to take a nap. But before we do that, I did want to share with you guys um, the fact that we got chickens this past spring. They don't live at our house, though. They live at our friend's house. They have a huge chicken coop. They have the whole setup. They let their chickens free range on ticks in the yard. Um, and the chickens just live their best life. So technically, we have chickens. They just don't live with us. Um, but we get some eggs so we're gonna pick up some eggs we're gonna bring harley let her kind of run around with their dog a little bit um and just say hi to them before we have some dinner and today is my husband's one day off for kind of a few days um so i think this evening i am going to be focused more on him than on all of you even though i dearly love you all i hope you remember that um but we're gonna you know have some quality time i'll see what i can show you guys but tomorrow might be the day when we really dig deep and I show you some things around the house and we get organized. I'm gonna get some eggs. Fresh eggs. Fresh eggs. <laughs> so good for the baby. So good for Harley, apparently. <laughs> She's excited. Just kidding, Harley's allergic to eggs. Harley is allergic to eggs. <laughs> Of 
yours, I think. Yeah, she's one of yours. <laughs> nice choreography. Oh, wow. So these are checks. Yeah, yeah we're gonna take care of them. Oh, she's gonna have it. Oh, no. That's cheap. Very cool. Okay, get them out. Can I pick one up? Sure. Um, this is yours. Here. So that's one of your chickens. Oh, Rossi. Rossi, you named it? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do the chicken dance. Come Carly. She doesn't seem to care about them. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is this one laying eggs? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was one of the first to lay eggs. Where do they lay eggs? Wow. There's no eggs right now. Okay. Do they prefer to be out here or inside? Um, they, they can go anywhere they want and they love to go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, they love this. I think Carly's happy here. <laughs> and eat that glass egg. Yeah. yeah. The smaller one mm -hmm. doesn't have a bigger comb. That's feathers. The black one is rosemary. And the other one, oh, feathers has a yellow tag on her foot. Yeah. Um, and we have a brown button inside. We have a small. In your Water, huh? Yeah. You just yeah. It you keeps can open the water clean. Very cool. Yeah, so if you so just they get clean water. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. This is so perfect. Yeah. There you go. What's this one saying? Rossi. Rossi. How can you tell the names? Because they the name tag. Oh. I haven't yeah. held. I should probably hold one. Can put it in the video. Can put his head close up. What's it? Oh, they're soft. <laughs> is it good lighting okay? Yeah. Look at him. This is Rossi. Do they keep their mouths open like that all the time? No. <laughs> See?
thought I would check in with you guys while I'm still dealing kind of with that like weird morning sickness. Um, I don't throw up. I just feel kind of like nauseous, like headed and, and like I just need to lay down. <laughs> so I'm not going to be doing any vlog activities just yet until I get my feet under me. But yeah, I just kind of feel like whew, just getting ready for the day, kind of choking out of me, washing my face, doing my makeup. And I will check back in, I'll feel a little better, and I'll chat at you guys more. <laughs> better but I haven't quite gotten to the getting dressed portion of today so I'm still wearing my PJs and it happens but that is why I only buy cute pajamas like you know pajamas where it's basically just like your husband's shirt and a, and a pair of old dirty stretchy shorts like I used to wear pajamas like that um, but then on days where I wasn't feeling good it kind of multiplied those negative feelings because I didn't even have like look cute in my pajamas so now I only have cute pajamas I got them most of them from TJ Maxx they're Laura Ashley pajamas now I want to make a whole video on this but I think that the secret to looking cute 99% of the time is simply not owning non-cute things and so even if you're doing like housework or sleeping or you know gardening whatever your junky clothes are still somewhat cute now they don't have to be expensive they don't have to be high-end um but they could be flattering they could be in cute colors and then you will look cute 99 percent of the time it's my life hack and it's why i have gotten rid of every single thing in my wardrobe that doesn't look cute on me unless it serves like an extreme extremely intense purpose I'm gonna get dressed but first we're gonna catch our breath Last night I slept really well um, and I've been thinking so much about the baby kicking ever since the doctor asked and the thing is I've never been pregnant right so I don't I don't know what that would feel like so sometimes I feel like no I don't even want to use the word movement but I just feel things in my belly <laughs> that are different than anything I've ever felt down there, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't feel like intestinal stuff. It doesn't feel like, oh, my stomach hurts. It's like a different feeling. So maybe that's the baby. You know, what else would it be? <laughs> but it is really interesting, you know, for a first time pregnancy, it's like you really don't know anything. Like, you don't know what you're experiencing. Hopefully, that's what that is. And I don't have just like random abdominal pain, but. It's not even painful. It's just like a little, maybe it is a kick, but I thought a kick would be like kick, you know, but it's not like that. It's like a, yeah, it's more like, like <laughs> right around my like ab, like lower ab muscles. It's like, I feel like a, like a, a sensation then it goes away, but it's not like a kick, like how you'd picture, like, like how you picture a baby kicking. So who knows? I'm going to keep laying down because I'm so sorry. I just, I can't do this sitting up right now. <laughs> After I rest, I'm going to take you guys down and show you um, a bunch of books because I finally purged my bookshelf. You have no idea. It's been two years. 
there's been this bookshelf with like random junk on it in our basement and it's in, it's in a place we never really go um but it's been in the back of my mind even though I don't see it it's been in the back of my mind taking up free real estate against my will and my husband was sitting down there doing a filing project and I'm one of those kind of people where I can do a project like organizing or cleaning as long as I have company like just be in the room with me you don't have to help me clean you don't have to help me organize in fact I'd prefer if you don't but be a presence in the room and when I find something cool that I forgot about I have someone to hold it up and like show and I have a little bit of accountability so I don't get too sidetracked because I always get sidetracked by decorating when I am cleaning and organizing. So my husband was down there and I was like, well, this is, you know, you're, you're in the right spot, babe. I might as well take advantage of your presence and, um, do this bookshelf that's been haunting my nightmares, my homemaking nightmares for two years. So I cleaned it and I purged a bunch of books and maybe we'll take those to Goodwill today, but I unearthed a bunch of books my mom sent me in the fall that I read when I was between the age of maybe like 12 to 16, um, that really shaped my worldview on friendship, sexuality, virginity, um, marriage, a lot of those books that really had a, like a, a huge impact on me. So I will show that to you. But first, I do rest here. Hello, welcome to the basement. Sorry, my dog. She just loves it when I talk to this phone. She like knows it's our routine. So I did want to start with this first one. It is very ratty and used. And that's how I know I read it a lot as a child. So it's called A Girl's Guide to Life. And it says the real dish on growing up, being true and making your teen years fabulous. <laughs> it's about the serious questions, sensitive issues, changes in your body, pressures around you, um, and your relationship with God, things that are, so they say, are too embarrassing maybe to approach your mom about. And so I really did enjoy this book. Um, it talks about peer pressure, fashion, sexuality, and even your rights. Look at this. They have a self-defense section for young women. They're there's a woman there kicking a bad guy like that's what we want our young ladies to know you guys can totally see why I got my influence um, from we are feminine we are sweet but we do not let people take advantage of us so highly recommend loved this book as a child this next book is by Haley DeMarco and this had a huge impact on my life it's called technical virgin how far is too far it's helpful to illustrate some modern things that come up for young women you know the idea idea of being a technical virgin and you know what that means in relationships and Haley also discusses you know the topic of how do you move forward if you have maybe done some things in your past that you don't align with anymore maybe you've repented of if you're a Christian so this book is really fabulous for young women and I don't think we should shelter young women forever or never discuss sexuality with them because young vibrant women healthy young women will have a sexuality a sensual side to themselves and that's not wrong to have um, but we need to learn how to mold that in you know in a way that honors God as we are Christian women this is mostly if you cannot tell this is for young Christian women <laughs> the next book I waited to read until I was a lot older it's every young woman's battle it discusses every form of sexual temptation that people go through and it doesn't skirt over the fact that met that women struggle with a lot of the same sexual temptations that men do, um, which I think is really great. It's really good to, again, recognize that women have a sexuality and it's not a bad thing, but as Christian women, we need to be aware of that. So next I wanna move into the fictional books that <laughs> impacted my life, um, because I think fiction does play a huge role in our real life as well. So the first one is the Christy Miller Collection. I read this very young and it's about a woman, a young, woman young girl she goes on a faith journey it covers a wide range of topics from family to friends like making decisions in life being bratty you know a lot of things that affect young women 
The next books I want to recommend are the Jeanette Oak books. These are more um, like pioneer related, but it's not Amish fiction. They usually follow a woman who goes through a difficult situation and how she overcomes it. Usually she falls in love, um, but it really teaches a lot about the strength of character in a woman, um, that we're more than our looks, that we shouldn't just care about material things. It teaches a lot about survival and they're just wildly entertaining books. And, and the, the heroines in these books did have a huge impact on how I wanted to be as a woman. And she's also the author of the When Calls the Heart books. Um, and I believe there is a TV series of the same name, which I don't know if it's any good, but I'm sure it is because those books were fabulous. And then the final recommendation I have, it's called How to Be a Lady. And it's a contemporary guide to common courtesy. And so there's literally hard and fast rules in here that are so helpful if you really care about being very like etiquette focused, which I do because it's a fun hobby because we don't have this in our culture anymore. We don't have finishing schools. We don't have like a British society to keep us intact. So it's fun to just learn about this stuff, how to make a dinner reservation and it will have all this information. If a lady finds she must raise a sensitive subject with a friend or a coworker, she she does so in the kindest but most direct manner possible. This is not necessarily for young, young women, but I think a lot of you guys in the audience would love this book and I will put an affiliate link below. Highly, highly recommend. I think you guys would love this book. So that wraps up um, my book recommendations. Again, keep in mind, most of these are for very young women and they're very Christian based. They're very focused on saving yourself for marriage. They're very focused on modesty. Um, um, but that aligns with my religious beliefs, and I know it aligns with a lot of your guys' religious beliefs. So again, just a PSA, please keep your tolerance in mind. Tolerance is not just about skin color, as I always say, it's also about our beliefs, our culture, and our religion. So those are my recommendations. Um, but now I am feeling pretty energized, and I think it's time to round up some of these things I want to purge in the house and bring them to the Goodwill and then maybe even stop in the Goodwill and see if we can find anything cute for the home. Okay, so we are back home. I am sitting beside my growing pile of stuff I'm collecting for the baby. I haven't been going crazy. I'm restraining myself, but when I've been out thrifting and I've been finding cute baby things, I have not been able to resist. Now the thing is, I'm not planning on thrifting any baby equipment or really any baby toys, um, more just baby clothing. They're usually 99 cents, it's so cheap. Baby clothing is so expensive, but they only wear it for like a month or two. This is homemaking related in my opinion because I'm making a home for the baby. Hi, you're the, you're the baby, aren't you? <laughs> She's visiting. Angel, you're the baby. Is that why you're visiting me? Okay, so I have been collecting a lot, but I'm also trying to have self-control because I decided to never buy or register for anything unless I could visualize 
and exactly figure out where it would live in the house. <laughs> now I know that's a little extreme, but the thing is I'm really anti-clutter. But the less clutter we have in our house, the easier it is to clean. So I've been emptying out closets, making drawers and full on cupboards empty because then when I have, you know, pumping equipment or I have a bunch of clothing or a stroller, there will be room in the house for that stuff. So, and I have been holding on to this poncho and I don't really wear ponchos. Like it's not very flattering with my larger chesticles and my thighs. It kind of like makes me into a huge brick but this will be fabulous I think as a breastfeeding cover and it's huge I don't know if this is going to affect the microphone and I apologize if it will but look how big this is it's kind of awesome and it's a great color so I've been holding on to this I decided not to get rid of it um, we will see if it works for the breastfeeding situation. We also have this um, teddy bear that I had thrifted a year ago. I didn't even think about, you know, having a child and giving it to them, but we're gonna put this in the nursery. We don't wanna, you know, force like policing onto our child just because daddy's a police officer doesn't mean we need to have a whole policing themed nursery or anything. Um, but daddy does matter in our son's life. So I think having like a couple little nods to it is, is appropriate and sweet. I have a bunch of hats that I've been thrifting and they're so soft, 100% cotton and look unused as well. Um, then I have this unused, it still has the tags, 100% cotton sleep sack. And I've been reading a lot about these. Why spend $30? Um, let's spend $2.99. Very nice. We have some cute joggers. Oshkosh, which I recognize that from when I was a child. <laughs> and then some shorts. These have sh little sharks on them, and I really like that kind of baby gap look with clothing. Some stretchy pants. Um, again, this kind of piece of clothing, I've noticed, can be very high use. And so I've not been purchasing anything that has like pills on it or discoloration or stretch. I wouldn't even purchase that for myself, let alone my son. And so these things are just very unused looking and I know we're gonna want a lot of stretchy pants um, around. And then we have this 100% cotton set of overalls. They have alligators all over them, embroidered, which is very nice. We have more of these kind of stretchy hats I've been thrifting and then this kind of hat. Mom and son are gonna be wearing hats. We're gonna stay out of the sun. Hats, little t-shirts overalls i picked up these at another goodwill never been worn little short overalls with the <laughs> so cute guys i'm gonna start tearing up this is like when i tear up i'm like oh baby thanks <laughs> on little t-shirt they have um they have little like woodland creatures on them and the booties are built in so cute the pants again baby pants are kind of expensive so I've just been enjoying thrifting them. Who even knows how much he's going to wear pants <laughs> when we have him around. Um, but fabulous, right? Just the highest quality. We have US Polo Association over here. Like he's going to be wearing better clothing than me probably for a time and then little cargoes. There's more in here. I could go on for days, years, months, and forever on all the stuff I'm getting. But I, I just hope you know too, I do have limits. I'm not going so insane. I have a plan and a limit um, for how many things I'm, I'm gonna be buying for each age because, you know, I have to store this stuff, right, Harley? Hi. Let me see, yeah. And I don't want to, um, I don't wanna have so much that it's just spilling out of, the dresser you know i i don't i don't want to go crazy but if i see you know u.s polo S association baby clothes never been used for a dollar it's kind of hard to resist that like not gonna lie so anyways i'm gonna then make some food because i really haven't eaten much today at all and i think it's time
up on it with printing pictures. So I already have our um, baby announcement photos hanging in this house, which I will show you. But now it's time to finally frame um, the actual ultrasound we got that I showed you guys in the vlog. Um, but I just haven't found the right frame until today. So this is going to just be a quick, easy little, you know, frame project. And this isn't necessarily a tutorial, but I do want to encourage you guys um, to upload your photos online, get them printed and hang them in your house. You will not regret it. It is so nice for guests to kind of see these snapshots from your life. And when we're thrifting frames and when we're buying them from dollar stores and Walmart, it's not even gonna break the bank. So let's get this done. It is that time of day. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I'm sorry if this vlog was a little more on the low key side. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. It does help other people find our community. If you're interested, you can join the Feminine Family by subscribing. I do have a written blog and an Instagram account you can feel free to take a peek at. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, I have a bunch of vlogs you can feel free to watch. And in general, I hope you guys have a wonderfully blessed and slow living focused week, my beautiful sisters. Thank you.